Hi, this is Mike Bjorkman. Thanks so much for watching SCV TV and tuning into our segment, Minute with Mike. I'm excited today to have Keith Reno. He's with Pacific Bund Funding Mortgage Division. And uh, Keith and I have been friends for a long time. We share a lot of the same beliefs in marketing and the way we treat clients. So I thought I'd talk today about loans and who else better to have than Keith Reno. Say hello, Keith. Thank you. Um, today, what I want to talk about specifically, we're going to do two segments. The first one is FHA loans. Uh, a lot of people use FHA or get FHA loans, but before they actually go to buy a home, most people don't know anything about it. So I wrote, wrote a couple notes here gotcha. that I wanted to go over for you, um, with you, and we, we go over this all the time with clients, but I wanted to be very specific. Um, the best thing that I know about FHA loans is the low down payment. Now, can you tell us about that? Yeah, the minimum down payment requirement for FHA financing is 3.5%. It's one of the most popular loan products used in today's market. Right. So one of the things I like to see is if you're going to buy, say, a $300,000 house, you can get in this house uh, with less than 10000 down. Uh, when, you're, when you're renting a home in that price range in Santa Clarita, you're going to spend uh, $2,000 a month to rent it, and typically uh, you'll collect two months of security. So by the time you're done, you're up to five, six, sometimes $7,500 to rent a property. So with right now being cheaper to buy than rent, it's the same down payment almost, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, exactly. I mean, a $300,000 purchase price, your down payment, 3.5% is 10500 the mortgage payment roughly on a $300,000 home is right at about $2,000 a month. And then when you factor in the mortgage tax deduction, it becomes less expensive to purchase compared to rent. Right, absolutely. So, so we push FHA loans a lot, um, and we want to talk about the pros and cons. Let's talk about some more of the pros. Sure. Uh, one of the benefits that a lot of my buyers get that they don't know going into it is we can have uh, third-party co-signers. Can you talk to us about that a little bit? Absolutely. So a popular scenario, for an example, we might have son or daughter looking to purchase. Exactly. Their income requirements don't meet what's necessary to complete the transaction. Maybe they're themselves on their own, their debt to income ratios, as we call it, is a little too high. So mom or dad can come in and be what, the, what we call a non-occupant co-mortgager. We blend their income, blend their debts, and together as a whole, if they qualify within the debt to income ratio limits, that's a doable transaction. We do those all the time. Yeah, and I find that in most cases, just a little bit of help from the parents or another family member really makes a difference in qualifying. And, that, and, and just recently, we did a loan that it meant them having a small little condo moving into a bigger home, a single family home that made a big difference to my buyer right now. Absolutely. Um, now closing costs, closing costs credit we can get up to 6%, am I correct? Yes. And how would a buyer use 6% of the purchase price for an FHA loan? That's a great question. The standard closing costs, once you factor in third party fees, title, escrow, your prepaid items, the typical closing costs end up being about two and a quarter to two and a half percent. Right. FHA allows for a 6% seller's concession. So that remaining three and a half, almost 4% can be used for really buying down the interest rate. It cannot right. go towards the down payment, but it can be used to buy down the interest rate, really making that home affordable. So let's say a buyer did use an extra 3% to buy down the interest rate, and the interest rates are hovering somewhere under 4% today. How much impact could that make on someone's payment? Yeah, right now in today's market, it can make an impact of about a half of a, half of a percent to 0.75. That does fluctuate. This, the typical FHA interest rate today at no points is about three and a quarter. So <laughs> buying crazy. it down, you can actually get an interest rate below 3%, which is phenomenal. Yeah, no, and, and again, we have a lot of clients just recently that have used those seller closing cost credits to really buy down the loan. So when, when it comes time to payment time, I think if they buy it down, you know, three, three, uh, three quarters of a point is like somewhere around 100 bucks a month difference in their savings in the last couple transactions, which is a lot of money. That could be your utility payment or something like that. It's a good amount. So we talked a little bit about higher debt to income ratios. How would an FHA loan compare to a conventional loan as far as being lenient on that? Good question. For example, there are conventional loans out there with as little as 3% down or 5% down, but the debt to income ratio limit is 45%. With FHA, we typically like to keep them at about 52%. There are some flexibilities there. We can actually get up to the mid-50s. So that difference in 7 to almost 10% in that debt-to-income ratio, I mean, that can put a buyer at a $200,000 price up to approximately $300,000. It's a significant difference. Yeah, and it's really crazy when you think about it. Again, I just go over in my mind, it's cheaper to buy than rent. For now, with the market going up 10% in the last 90 days in most areas, yeah. we better hurry, that's for sure. And that's how people say, Mike, how do you know the market hit rock bottom? Bottom. Well, when it's cheaper to buy than rent, you usually know it's going to turn around, and, and sure enough, it has. Um, so let's talk a little bit about detached 
condos being approved and some of the issues we're having with condos being approved right now. Sure. Uh, in a condo complex, if you have adjoining walls on the sides or above or below, that whole complex needs to be approved by HUD for FHA financing. So that is certainly an issue right now. There's not too many complexes throughout um, the Santa Clarita Valley and surrounding areas that are actually approved. If it's what we call a site condo, so there are no adjoining walls on the sides or above or below, we treat those just as we do a single family residence. They do not require a specific um, HUD approval. All right, and that's why I point that out. So many homes in Santa Clarita are PUDs or PUDs, we call yep. them, detached condos. You know a lot of them, they have uh, maybe the um, the courtyards, they share the community area, um, tons of places like that, great rentals, great first time buyer places. So I like to point that out. Um, we'd be more than happy to get you the website so you can search uh, when you're looking on our websites for properties or whatnot. If you wanna know if the condo complex is approved, we'll give you that website. Just shoot us an email or uh, call our cell phones, not a big deal. But there isn't very many. So condos are one of the cons right now of an FHA loan. Yeah. Um, the, one of the last things I wanna talk about is this down payment, a lot of people say, Mike, I can qualify to buy. It's just with the economy the way it has been uh, and paying off debt, I can't save up a down payment. Well, most people don't understand there's other options like maybe a gift or a 401k. Can you give sure. us a little information on that? Sure. Quite common that our buyers are getting gift funds. Gift funds are allowed for not only the down payment, but as well as paying for the closing cost. Right. FHA does not have a minimum requirement in terms of the buyer's contribution to the transaction. So gift funds are allowed, uh, and quite frequently, they do pull from their 401ks. It's something that they're gonna to wanna to check with their 401k administrator to see what the guidelines are with the 401k, but pretty common that for the purchase of an owner-occupied home, they can typically pull at least $10,000 from their right. 401k. Right. Most of my clients that have used their 401ks, they had no idea until I told them and then they go, gosh, I had you know, 10, 15 grand in there. I wasn't real excited about it. And I said, well, that's the difference of you owning a home or not. What yeah. if that home shot up 100 grand or 200 grand in the next few years? How's that for a retirement vehicle? And then people go, yeah, you know what? With the tax savings, the future appreciation, I guess it would be worth pulling that out. Yeah, um, you hit the and, nail on the head. Yeah, so I mean, you couldn't ask for anything more. So FHA is a great way to go, obviously. Uh, the, I wanna talk a little bit real quick about the cons. Now, the biggest con, in my opinion, is the upfront mortgage insurance premium. Where does that 3.5% go? And monthly, what is the mortgage insurance premium? Where does that go? How does that work? This, this can change in the upcoming months because there's some things going through the House and the, and the Senate, but presently, the, the upfront mortgage insurance premium, it's 1.75%, so that is a con. The nice thing that FHA allows, they do allow you to roll that premium into your overall loan amount. Right. So it's nothing that a buyer has to come up with out of pocket. The monthly mortgage insurance premium when putting down 3.5% is one and a quarter percent. So on a $300,000 purchase price, the monthly mortgage insurance is about $300 a month. So that would be a con. Right. So it's better to own than rent though, so we know that. So it's so thanks to HUD for making it possible for just about anybody to be able to qualify to buy a home. Uh, we should probably touch real quick before we go. I know this is going a little longer than normal, um, but 30 day lates, charge offs, tax liens, a lot of people come to me, especially at our SCV leasing, the property management company, I ask these tenants that are great, why don't you buy? Oh, I have some 30 day lates and mm -hmm. talk to us, touch bases on at least those three things. 30 day lates, charge offs, tax liens. Sure. There is not a specific requirement that states that the majority of those items need to be paid. As long as we have at least a 640 credit score and there are some flexibilities down a little bit below that, but we do look at the credit report in a little bit more detail for below a 640 and we get the approved eligible through the underwriting system, then we allow that transaction to happen. We do ask the buyer to write a letter just explaining why some of those items may have occurred. Maybe they had a bit of a hardship or they were in between jobs at some point in time. There are reasonable explanations out there but there is not a, a hard set requirement that you cannot have lates or, or charge offs or things of that nature. Tax liens, tax liens do typically need to be paid. Right, now is that paid off or payment plans or? If it's within a payment off. plan, it needs to be in a payment plan for a minimum of three months. That's where I was going for. That's yeah. nothing, right folks? Yeah, three months. I mean, three <clears throat> months comes and goes incredibly quickly. Uh, if you're not in any type of payment plan, then it would need to be settled and right. paid in full. Now, if we have a charge off, if we call it say, the credit card and said, hey, I'd like to make payments to you. Is that okay as well for qualifying? Well, a charge off, we do not require charge offs to be paid or settled. You don't even need to be in any type of payment plan. Same thing with collections. <laughs> better. It's only tax liens. Okay. Yeah. 
Wow. So again, guys, you can see. Uh, and real quick before we go, the FICO score. Don't let FICO scores intimidate. You just heard him say 640, sometimes below. Our community, our media has said, if your FICO score is under 700, you have bad credit. That's not true. You heard it right here. You can buy with a FICO score lower than 640 in some cases. So Keith, I think we've given some great information to our viewers, and I really appreciate you being here. People are going to be wanting to call you and email you and visit your website. Now, I know you have a great media page with great information on it. Give us a few ways to get a hold of you. Sure. You can call me direct, 661-513-3118. Probably the best thing to do would be to visit our media page, www.renoteam.com. It has all the information there, various ways for you to get in touch with us, email, call, and we'll be happy to help. Right. And I guess, I guess we should give you a little plug, too. Um, since Keith and I worked a lot on marketing and social media, if you're a newer agent and you'd like to work with FHA buyers, uh, Keith and his brother Jason have some fantastic marketing that he can offer you guys to get you off the ground and uh, start marketing with. So that's it for today. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to SCV and SCV TV and Minute with Mike. Um, stay tuned. Our next segment's going to be on VA financing. Have a great day. Thank you.